which means we've got to bring in our guest, one of our favorites here on the open, and none other than Sean Emery, the Chief Investment Officer at Avery & Co. Sean, welcome back to the open. How you doing, Corey? Good morning. Uh, well, you know, I'm doing good, but I can tell you who's probably not doing that great this morning, which is everyone who owns shares of Snap. I mean, their outlook, to say it's a tough pill is perhaps an understatement. I got to get your take on what is going on with this company. Yeah, it was, um, it, it was, it, it's quite shocking. Um, the, so, so yesterday, just starting again on Snap is, is we participated in that tech conference yesterday that they spoke at. Um, and I think it's important to step back for uh, just a second. First, I think their forecasting has been pretty subpar over the last year or so. Um, a year ago, they outlined 50% growth projections for the coming years. And that was in February of 2021. And that was a bold expectation to set then. Um, in Q4 of 2021, they were already below those expectations. So kind of pre anything that's out there macro related um, and a, a lot of the, the uh, other attributes like currency and, and such, they were already below their kind of uh, expectations from just before or, or three quarters before that. Now, obviously, we, we move into... Uh, Q1 of this year, calendar year Q1, and they report and they set out a guidance that, again, is below their kind of 50% uh, target. So th there is this kind of nature of them not having the ability to forecast their business properly. They were already growing sub 40% pre-Ukraine invasion. So that, that's kind of setting the stage of, of how you should digest some of this. Um, second, they are 2% of the digital ad market uh, in the US. So they don't reflect digital ad spend totally. I think it's, it's an important signal for sure. Um, to pay attention to just given their, their, their size and scale, but they are only 2% of the, the U S digital ad market. So I think that's important context as well. Um, and then lastly, they were one of the first ad tech, uh, related uh, businesses, uh, to report and guide. So again, you have this combination of being a little bit earlier than everyone in terms of understanding what the macro and, um, dynamics were in terms of spend trends. Uh, but then also they've been pretty bad at forecasting and this is just another one. So big picture, the, the number itself, as if you were a Snap investor, I think you have to be pretty um, down in terms of uh, how you feel about the overall story. I mean, a sub twenty percent growth is is minuscule given the outlines that they have projected for everyone else a year ago. So that's kind of the nature of the beast in terms of trying to think through Snap and what it means for Snap in general, but also beyond that. Well, you know, it, I love that you said beyond Snap because it's not just Snap. I mean, even though Snap is down more than thirty four percent in pre market trading, there are some other. I'll call them sympathy stocks for lack of a better term here, right? That are also feeling, right, the brunt of what's going on. And I'm talking Facebook also down in pre-market trading, Twitter down, even Pinterest down more than 11%, all on the back of what is going on with Snap. I mean, at, at, at this point, why are they having such a big influence on these other stock names? Yeah, it's a, it's, I mean, look, we're in that market of shoot first, ask questions later. Um, no doubt. Um, and that's the story of the beast right now. Obviously, their, 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 their customers in terms of how they generate revenue tend to be the same in terms of uh, ad agencies and, and small businesses, you know, but there are different dynamics between the, the, the different players, I think, in terms of who they serve and the type of businesses they serve ads to. Um, so I think, again, it's, it's trying to sift through the noise and say, OK, well, uh, Snap is 2% is of the U.S. market. Um, that's number one. And again, their projections historically have been pretty bad. Uh, in terms of where they eventually land. Um, so it, I, I understand the the sentiment in terms of, hey, are these other ad tech players also oh, going to be impacted? Did advertisers pull uh, some of their ad spend? Um, I think that's a fair kind of digestion. But I, again, some of the moves that you're, you're seeing out there are, are pretty dramatic. So I think, it, again, it's a shoot first, ask questions later. Um, that's just the, the, the market that we're in today. And, and um, again, whoever uh, is actually going to grow and, and has valuation support, I think over kind of several years will will um, uh, come from this uh, in a pretty positive light. Well, let's definitely hope so there, Sean. I want to move over to another company that I did hit on off the top here, and that is Zoom. Right now in pre-market trading, it is up more than 5%. So there's some profitability on at least the profit size, but sales growth continues to dwindle. I mentioned the slowest growth rate um, that they've reported at 12%. What are your top takeaways from Zoom? Yeah, full disclosure, we are investors in Zoom. Um, we have uh, started doing investing in the last kind of like half year. But the um, in general, you know, it, it is from our standpoint, it was a good report, right? If you look back uh, Q1 of last year, which is the matching quarter, they, they grew 191 percent, and then the year before that was also in the hundred percent. Um, so there is this like rate of change, right? It, the reality is, is they're growing off of those astronomical growth rates. So I think you should look at that as as a net positive that they aren't seeing massive churn um, in their business. The key things that anyone, at least us, are looking at is, you know, how is Zoom taking what they built, 
and what they executed well during the heart of COVID and expanding that platform beyond. And I think that's the important takeaway of this, this uh, latest earnings call where they highlighted some key wins, where they, they want to deal with Humana. They wanted uh, a couple other deals, not for a Zoom meeting, but at, for Zoom phone, which they announced they have 3 million uh, f- uh, people using Zoom phone now. They have a Fortune 10 using Zoom chat for over 100,000 employees, which is a pretty big number. Again, that's a competitor to Slack in a way. Um, They just announced a couple slew of products over the last month, uh, one being Zoom Contact Center. So think Ring Central and Five9 as comparables. And they landed two large kind of um, uh, enterprise deals this past quarter, which I thought was early actually in the adoption of Zoom Contact Center. I mean, they just rolled this out and they're landing enterprise deals uh, pretty quickly. On the earnings call, they did say 10% of their revenue is coming from non-Zoom meeting products now. Um, so that's a pretty big number. So you get Zoom phone, Zoom contact center, Zoom webinar, and all the uh, other things around it. I think the, the story is becoming fuller in nature and, and not just a one-trick pony in terms of Zoom meetings. Um, and again, enterprise growth this past quarter was up 31%. So that is a pretty uh, sticky part of the business. That's growing faster than the core business. And those are much longer deals. And, and uh, again, you alluded to it is profitability. 40 plus percent uh, cash flow margins, $5.7 billion of cash today. That's more cash than Apple has on its balance sheet relative to its market cap. Um, so there's a lot to like there, but it, it's again, dwelling or, or uh, understanding the fact that they did grow triple digits for two years in a row and they still grew despite uh, trying to uh, uh, comp over those growth rates. So that's kind of our key takeaway uh, for the report. Well, that's a very good takeaway. And Sean, thank you so much for walking us through Snap and through Zoom. We love when you join the show. Once again, everyone, this is Sean Emery. He is the Chief Investment Officer at Avery & Co. Thanks, Sean.